Hi everyone, it's April from Getting Hooker With It. Today I want to share with you some of my very favorite World War II books. So let's get into it. So this is the time of year I always reach for World War II books. Um, I also always watch Band of Brothers with Barry every year leading up to Remembrance Day on November 11th. It's really important to us to remember and commemorate people who lost their lives. Obviously, World War II is not the only war that has happened. Um, but for me, there's just something about this time of year that I just am drawn to that time period in particular. So I do have a really big stack of books here that I want to share with you. These are some of my very favorite. Uh, there's quite a bit to get to, so let's just dive right in. The first book I want to share with you is Transcription by Kate Atkinson. Kate Atkinson is a gorgeous writer. I, I discovered her, I think it was 2018, and fell madly in love with her writing. Um, transcription follows Juliet in 1940. She wants to get involved with the war effort and she tries to sign up as a spy with um, MI5. And, you know, she learns that it, it, it's not all it's cracked up to be. She starts as a typist and she does end up, you know, getting involved and being a more prominent player. Um, but it's not as thrilling, I think, as she imagines it to be. So this is also quite humorous, if I'm being honest. I, I chuckled my way through this. Um, and we follow her then. We also follow her 10 years later. She's working for the radio, the BBC. She's a radio producer there now. And then all of a sudden, figures from her past start showing up in her life. And you learn why as you go along. I really, really enjoyed this book. I feel like this is hit or miss for a lot of people. Some people love it, some people hate it. I fall on the love side of things. I mean, it's Kate Atkinson. So there is that. Um, next is a book that is quite heartbreaking in a lot of ways. This is When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbit by Judith Kerr, Kerr I should say. Um, she passed away. I think it was earlier this year, if I'm not mistaken. And Judith Kerr, this is like semi-autobiographical for her of her childhood um, in 1933. So we follow nine-year-old Ada, who doesn't fully understand who Hitler really is. Um, she wakes up one morning to find out that her father has left very suddenly from Berlin, her home. And uh, she's devastated. Her mother tells her that he's gone to safety because Germany is no longer safe for Jewish people and they are Jewish people. So they also leave soon after and make their way to Switzerland. Um, and it's about their experience on the way, the new languages that they learn, the new friends that they make, but also how a child kind of wraps their head around war and wraps their head around them not being wanted simply because of their religious beliefs. Um, it's devastating and so honest in a lot of ways. Um, I really, really did enjoy this. I think this is one of Jen Campbell's very favorite books. Um, and I read this because of Jen Campbell. So that's When Hitler Stole Pink Rabbits. Next is, oh my gosh, is this my favorite World War II book? Maybe? Uh, I'm not going to stick to that. I'm not, I'm not going to commit, but I love this book. This is The Book Thief by Marcus Zizek. This follows a little girl named Liesl. She lives in Germany, and this is set in 1939. Um, her family uh, is dead um, and she goes to stay with an adoptive family who are two very kind people especially the man her, her like new father is just so wonderful in this and uh, it is about her trying to have a childhood in the midst of war in Germany which as you can imagine would not always be that easy. Um, 
And it is also about how books save her. She is a book thief. She will, you know, go and try to steal books that are being, um, that are going to be burnt or are even burning because the Germans have decided that certain books shouldn't be read. Um, and it, it's about how books save her, her life and how she, as a little human being, saves other people's lives. They're their hearts, their, um, she gives them comfort in this incredibly tumultuous time. It's a very scary time, but she still somehow manages to have a, uh, a childhood. And what was so interesting about this, one of the things that is interesting about this book is that it's narrated by death, which I thought was so inventive. So because it's narrated by death, you know that people in this book who she is close to. I mean, not everybody's gonna live. And I bawled my eyes out reading this. Bawled my eyes out. I think I listened to that on audiobook and uh, oh my gosh, adored it. Um, next is uh, another children's literature book. This is The Boy in the Striped Pajamas by John Boyne. John Boyne uh, is a really beautiful writer and in this book we follow a little boy named Bruno who moves away from his you know normal home away from his dear dear friends um, but he has to move because his father got a new job and his father is the head of I think it's Auschwitz he gets that job and he goes to stay in this big, huge house that he doesn't really love because he liked his old house more. And um, he sees in the distance from his bedroom window um, this fenced-in area with people walking around in it. And he's curious and he goes to visit and he meets a little boy there and they become friends. And the little boy is obviously Jewish. He's obviously... Um, you know, sent to this con concentration camp and is a prisoner, essentially, and they become friends. And it's wonderful. It's I, I, I feel similarly in a lot of ways to um, when Hitler stole Pink Rabbit because it's very honest about how a kid would process this particular war which is so confusing and, you know, for him to be on the right side of things, um, he'd have to think that his father is a terrible human being. And that would be a hard thing to stomach. Um, and the conversations that he has with this new friend of his are so interesting and honest and, and quite sad. It's a really sad one, but really good. I'd recommend that. Nonfiction next. This is The Splendid and the Vile by Eric Larson. This is one of the best nonfiction books I, that I read this year and I just loved it. This is really about Churchill during the London Blitz and how he handled how he handled it, how he handled England being bombed, especially London obviously, but um, how he raised the English people's spirits, how amazingly resilient the English people were, and all of the players involved. Um, it really made me realize how quirky uh, Churchill was, very like bold, passionate man, but also kind of weird in a lot of ways, just the way that he was described, Eric Larson completely drew me in and I've already went and picked up um, In the Garden of Beasts, which is another World War II nonfiction book by Eric Larson. I had unhauled that a while ago because I didn't think that I liked his writing. And then I read this and oh, I do like it, especially his war stories. So I would so recommend that if you're interested in the English side of things and how they survived. Next is, oh, it's like historical fiction meets sci-fi. Um, this is Life After Life by Kate Atkinson. Um, this follows a girl named Ursula and we essentially follow her many lives. And in some lives she dies very quickly as a baby and other lives um, she dies as a toddler, you know, reaching for a doll and falling out a window. And you follow the many iterations of her lives. 
Um, and you know, if she chooses this one to go down one path, she dies. And if she goes another way, she doesn't. And so you as a reader are aware of how she could die. And so you're, you're kind of on the edge of your seat because you're like, don't go that way. I know it's kind of like watching a horror movie in a lot of ways, um, which is kind of fun. A very beautiful horror movie um, because this is gorgeously written. Uh, now it does lead over, over time in this book, you do see Ursula, um, you know, getting involved in World War II and living through some things and dying through some things. And I felt like the Blitz parts of this were so impactful um, and nerve wracking. I, I think Ursula ends up uh, working to try to recover bodies and try to help people during these bombings and um, those scenes were absolutely incredible and really really impactful. I loved this book still one of my favorite books of all time like oh I will reread that at some point there is also a sequel kind of sequel to it it's a god in ruins I haven't read it yet but it follows Ursula's brother no, and it's it doesn't like jump around in time that way. Next, I want to recommend All the Light We Cannot See by Anthony Doerr. This is such a beautiful book. It had so much buzz for a reason. It took Anthony Doerr, I think, 10 years to write this. And you can tell by how beautifully he crafted this book. Also, this is one of my favorite covers. There's something about the blues in here. Blues on a book always gets me. So in this book, we follow two characters. We follow Marie-Laure, who is blind. She's a little girl in Paris. Um, we also follow um, Werner. I think someone told me that I was saying Werner, and it's supposed to be Werner. I don't know. I think probably Werner makes more sense. Um, we follow him. He lives in Germany, and he's kind of a little master at um, radio and and learning how to construct radios and he takes them apart and puts them back together again. Now the Nazis get a hold of him and make him essentially become part of the army and use his skills for, you know, not so great intentions. Um, so we follow these two characters in very different circumstances and you slowly see them eventually meet which you you know that that's going to happen the whole way through you're just waiting for it to happen um I loved it it was gorgeously written like I said um definitely a beautiful one can be slow at times but it's such a joy the writing is such a joy next is another book that I thought was a lot of fun this is The Secret Keeper this goes back and forwards in time um we meet a woman in present day whose mother is in her 90s, I think. Yeah, her mother is in her 90s. They're all getting together and she wants to sit her mom down and talk to her about an event that happened in her childhood. She was like 16 years old or something like that. There was this summer lavish party and she witnessed her mother have a violent interaction with a man who drove up to the house during this party. And she's always wondered about it. She's never felt like she could ask her mom about it. Um, and she's finally gotten the courage to ask. And then you dive into her mother's past and you meet her mother during World War II and the events of World War II. And the, I remember the scenes of the London Blitz. There's something about the London Blitz I'm just fascinated by. But those scenes were so impactful and nerve wracking. Um, I I felt like I was there, kind of. I really enjoyed The Secret Keeper. That is for sure. If you haven't read it yet, go ahead. Well, all of these books. If you haven't read any of these books, just go and read them all. Okay, next is a middle grade book that I adored. This is The War That Saved My Life by Kimberly Brubaker Bradley. That is a mouthful. This is a really heartwarming story in the end. It, we follow little Ada and her younger brother, Jamie. They live in London with 
an incredibly cruel mother. Ada has a club foot. And because of that, her mother has kept her inside her entire life. She's never left her apartment because her mother is humiliated by her and her mother is physically and emotionally abusive towards Ada. Jamie, on the other hand, can leave. She's still not nice to him, but she treats him like a million times better than she treats Ada. Now, um, the war is on. And as you know, many, many children were sent to the countryside um, during the war because they know the bombs are going to drop. It's safer for the children to be on the countryside. So Jamie is going to be sent to the countryside, but Ada is not going to be sent. So she manages to get herself on a bus and she and Jamie go to the countryside and they go to live with the most wonderful woman who like didn't really sign up to have kids like had no intention of doing that but she takes them in and she is just wonderful she is the mother essentially that these children always needed I loved her so much there is a sequel I have it on my TBR for this month um yeah I so highly recommend that that's like very uplifting another World War II nonfiction book that was so surprising in a lot of ways. This is Unbroken by Laura Hill and Brand. Um, so like Anthony Doerr, she takes many years to write her books. I don't think she's come out with anything since Unbroken. She takes a long time to write. Um, 2014 or 2010, I should say this was um, published. So right about now, we could probably expect another book by Laura because it takes for that long. I think she also wrote Seabiscuit. In any case, in this book, we follow Louis Zamperini, who, had, like, this man had so many lives, you know, in one life. Amazing. So he went to the Olympics as a runner. Um, and soon after the Olympics, he joined the army, became a pilot. His plane it goes down in the ocean and he's rescued by the Japanese and is sent to uh, a POW camp essentially. And uh, it, uh, such a hard life. What a resilient man. Not that he walked away from the war unscathed in any way, shape or form. You see how it devastates his mental health. This is just another reason that people in the military should, oh my goodness, I, I'm always surprised, like, they don't always have the best support, like, they need mental health support so much, they need therapists there, they, we are asking them to face the worst of, hum, of humanity, essentially, um, and the worst circumstances and then expect them to just get on with their lives and not have it affect them. Uh, and so this shows all of the horrors that he faces in the war. And then it also shows um, that impact on him. I thought it was brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. I loved it. Okay. And last but not least, it's a book that I read. Was it this year or last year? I can't remember anymore. So good though. Dear Mrs. Bird by A.J. Pierce. This came out of nowhere and really surprised me in the best of ways. Um, this is about a young woman named Emmeline. She and her her best friend um, Bunty have moved to London together. They share a flat and Emmeline is like, right, I am going to be a war correspondent. I am going to get right into journalism and write important stories and she's hired by this newspaper and she's so excited and then she gets there and realizes that she's going to be helping with a women's column called Dear Mrs. Bird and she meets Mrs. Bird because Mrs. Bird actually exists and Mrs. Bird is pretty standoffish. She was she won't really help everyone who writes in. She's very selective about you know proper young ladies and this kind of annoys Emmeline for good reason. And she fights back by writing back to all of the people that write in just to offer them as much of advice as she can. Um, I thought it was just going to be that in this book. 
but emmeline also works to help out um during the blitz she helps out to you know help help people who had been bombed um victims from the bombings people who didn't survive she moves bodies like she's doing some grim work at night and then this kind of fluffy stuff during the day although she's trying to make that meaningful but those scenes surrounding the blitz and the devastation surrounding that were really well done and, and really quite sad um i think aj pierce is coming out with another book i don't know if it's a sequel or not it might be that would be wonderful because I loved Emmeline and I loved Fun Tea. So yeah, that are those are all of the books that I would really, really recommend. Those are the books that have stayed on my shelves. Um, World War II books that I just adore. And I hope that you will reach for one of these this month. Let me know in the comments below, what is your very, very favorite World War II book that you've read? Nonfiction, fiction, whatever. I'd love to know. I'd love to add another book to my very big pile of World War II books. Uh, I hope you guys are doing well and I'll talk with you soon. Bye everyone!